Hi, my name is Philip Wong. I lecture in accounting and taxation here at the Faculty of Business and Finance here at Holmes Glen. Someone once told me, you know, Philip, marking is the toilet cleaning of the academic world. And the man was so right. We spend so much time sifting through all of this paper, carefully, meticulously grading things for students not to really understand why we've given them the grade. I want to try and find for you a few ways that we can make this a little less painful and a little bit more effective for our students. This presentation was originally given for the Teaching and Learning Showcase that was delivered on the 7th of December, uh, Tuesday, for uh, Holmes Glen at our Moorabbin campus. So the first thing I want to run through is, does this picture look like you? overloaded with tons and tons of paper. Um, I certainly know this is the way I feel. So when it comes to handing in assignments, particularly assignments that have um, uh, lots of paper uh, and words, so essays and reports and the like, as opposed to Excel spreadsheets type, uh, type assignments, there are a number of problems that we face. One of them is poor quality assignments, collusion and plagiarism, students copying off each other or indeed students just basically cutting and pasting from the web. I certainly feel overloaded with marking. It's not a pleasant task at all. We just end up with far too much paper, paper which can be lost and whenever you're trying to write comments on these using your good old trusty red pen, commenting in an effective way takes up a hell of a lot of time. On that same aspect, there's problems with feedback and record keeping as well. Whenever you return the students' assignments, uh, I find that we give the students' assignments back with uh, uh, mar marks and uh, comments on it, and then immediately we're having to rip that back out of the students' fingers again because we need to keep the paper as part of our uh, evidence that we, the student has in fact done that work. Basically that means that there's little opportunity for the learner to improve or reflect on why did they actually receive that mark and, and how did it actually occur. Students don't actually see the value add in the work that we're actually doing when we're giving the mark. So students end up asking, what's my mark? And they never ask, why did I get this mark and how can I do it better in the future? So when I started on these e-learning goals, uh, e-learning projects, I had a couple of goals in mind where I wanted to you know, make sure that I'm not doing things any slower. At least, if I'm going to an e-learning world, it must be the same or at least faster. The service means that I should have some sort of net improvement delivery to the students, which are ultimately our, our end customers. Flexible. Yeah, I mean, how many times do you have the student who goes, oh, I missed the class, what's my mark? And then you have to go back and dig it up again. If you provide it online, basically they can go find it themselves and that way everyone gets the same, uh, the same levels of flexibility. I also want to make sure that I minimise the risk in the changeover. Whenever you're implementing any large uh, change, there's always some problem that, that uh, the users might ultimately reject it. It might work or there are some problems. So you have to make sure that, that any any problems that you can foresee can be addressed before they even occur. Obviously the biggest risk is technical risk when you're moving to an e-learning world, uh, so I always made sure that I had a backup plan or at least ran paper and uh, electronic versions at the same time, at least for one semester, so that I know that I'm not going to have any problems in clashing. And the final problem is uh, equity. I didn't want to create a digital hurdle where some students could and some students couldn't. And, uh, well, now finally, environmental concerns. Basically, less paper, less to keep, less problems overall. So there are three main problems I want to talk about. The number one problem for me, which was plagiarism. Number two was the problems in trying to grade effectively. And the final problem, which was uh, basically for students, and that was trying to give them some sort of effective feedback. These problems were basically solved by four main products out there that I want to talk about today. I'm not actually working for any of these companies. I'm a teacher. However, these are the three, uh, the four tools that I use constantly all the time. One of them was Turnitin, Blackboard, which is also known as TVC or Training VC or TAFE VC, and then there's Microsoft Word and Adobe Acrobat, which you, you can pick either of those. So let's look at plagiarism first. Plagiarism, it's such a huge problem today. 
Um, turn in offers plagiarism detection software. It's uh, provided on the web, so it's a lot like Hotmail or using Google Docs or Google Map. You don't need any specialised installed software. You just run it through a web browser. Um, it's now available to the entire institute, as the good people from the Learning Commons have now purchased the license for it. Um, I find that students are quite scared of Turnitin, so they no longer actually bother to try and copy or, or steal from any other uh, other work or any sources. They, they know that they're going to be caught. Mind you, because it checks originality, if the student employs someone else to, uh, uh, to, to write the essay for them, um, that essay although it's not been written by a student and it's not authentic, it is original so it can't catch that. Because basically the students have now had a crack at actually reading and understanding and engaging with the work, I get much better quality work and I'm not bored by constantly reading Wikipedia articles. Because they've had a go also, they're more engaged in the classroom. They actually understand what the hell it is you're talking about. And the final one, uh, well, Ultimately, this means that you're going to get better learning outcomes from your students as well. They might actually learn and remember something. So here's a quick look at the Turnitin website. Let's have a quick look at it uh, in, in the real world. So I'm going to open up Firefox. Here is the website. I'm going to put in my login details. And my password. And you should remember that, that's fine. Then I want to go to a particular class that I want to show you, which is Advanced Accounting Theory. And I've created a dummy, uh, uh, a dummy theory, which I basically plagiarized myself. So I'm going to quickly show you how Turnitin works. I can download the file here as a PDF, or I could go straight to the report. And I'll show you what the report looks like. So here's the essay that I wrote. It's my high-quality essay, high spelt H-I. And um, you can basically see that I've just cut and paste the entire thing from various wet, uh, internet sources. Now, uh, I've managed to steal... There, there are three main areas that we're looking for when turn it in. We're looking for uh, re the students' ability to reference properly. We're looking for students colluding with other students, so in other words, just copying each other's work. We're all and the final one is, is checking for students actually uh, stealing stuff from the internet and just cutting and pasting it. <clears throat> so you can see I've got all three here. This first part here in the red it was uh, copied from another student. So this was originally handed in as someone's work. And the um, I've gone around and I have changed a few words here and there and you can see immediately that it's picked up the original. This is the original right here. Here is the original again and it even shows me which parts are original. So I have also, it'll show me where I've changed words and I've even added in a few dodgy references here. Goodman, Smith and Wesson, Barnes and Noble, Kawasaki and Suzuki. Shows me where I got it from. Let's have a look at the uh, number two or number three. Uh, this one here, this will be good. This has been stolen from a website, so I can actually, using Turnitin, just click on this and go straight to the original website when it loads. Loading, loading, loading. Here we go. And this is the original website, which actually has information on historical cost, which I've basically just cut and paste into my essay here. So, with Turnitin, you can, uh, you can cut and paste to your heart's content, and basically we can catch you out straight away. It's very, very easy. All right, back to PowerPoint. <coughs> so, quick how-to with checking. Don't rely on the raw numbers. By the raw numbers, I'm talking about here. This report has been 98% copied from the internet or other sources, but sometimes you can have students who um, present very, very high uh, copied work because they've used a lot of quotes and sometimes some of my best students use a lot of quotes in appropriate places and they explain why so they will score very highly on turn in checking however um, their their work is of very high quality remember it's just a tool it's not actually going to grade things for you Make sure you look for citations. So, again, back to this one here. 
even though this is copied work, there is a citation at the end. Now, these citations I've made up, but if it, if it matches and there's a citation after it, clearly the person's not plagiarising. Turn it in is just showing you where to look. Be careful of students who upload twice. So someone might have a problem with the computer, they think that it didn't work, so they'll create a new login and upload their same work twice, which means that they'll get 100% match from their original submission. Um, that's very, very frustrating, <laughs> um, but obviously that person has not cheated because they haven't copied from themselves. That's it's a bit silly. Make sure that you let students see the report themselves. So this report here is not just for me. You can allow the student to see this report as well. And if they see it, it means that they understand what they're up against and basically they won't bother cheating because they'll know that they'll be caught. Allow the students to resubmit. That means that if uh, once they've received this report here and they realise, oh, I've copied all of this, they can actually go back, put in the reference and fix it up for you. Just remember that these reports do not generate immediately. Take for example in here, this report here says 98%. Um, when you initially upload it, that will be greyed out. You won't actually be able to see the report because it takes some time for, to actually crawl the entire database, match it all up and generate that report. It doesn't happen straight away. And if you find someone who has cheating, make sure that you, you follow up that student immediately. You report every single student who cheats. You can't go and do all this work and make it an empty threat. The idea is that it makes life easier for you. Grading. I grade using blackboard rubrics and it, it means that it provides me with objective grading. It means that I can basically use some point and shoot marking, making it very, very quick. It also sets some uh, good stance for the student and provides automatic meaningful feedback to the students. I have a centralised location for grades so the grades aren't attached to the paper and if I lose the paper well that would be the end of the world but, but in the e-learning world everything's kept on training VC or Blackboard so I won't be able to lose it. It also means that I can cross-reference a student performance with other metrics so I actually am able to see how long students have uh, logged on, how many times they've downloaded, how many times they've engaged with information on Blackboard so it's very very convenient because it's all kept in the same spot again reduces paperwork, recording and uh, record keeping and because everything is recorded in one central location it meets AQTF and AUQA record keeping requirements. So here's an image of, of a um, rubric. Rubrics generally do uh, speech of marking, they're built into Blackboard um, because you're also making the same comments again and again you can have a, test, a bank of comments in a Word document and then um, subsequently just cut and paste the appropriate uh, comments because let's face it most students will make very similar mistakes so you don't want to be trying to think of new ones all the time when the same comment is appropriate for for uh, for a bunch of, of students at the same time. Bear in mind also that Moodle has these same functions installed. So let's have a quick look at it. So I go into Blackboard I'm going to quickly have a look at it from the students perspective so you go to the student tab this brings us up to the demo student It'll be under assignments, and in assignments, I have a. Uh, so, under the assignments in the inbox, I'm now able to see a new assignment here as the student. So, we're quickly having a look at what the student will be able to see. Here is a situation and the requirements that the student will have to fill out. We can attach any additional uh, documents here via PDF or Word document or anything else that you want to be able the student to download and read. Then we're going to have a quick look at the, the grading rubric, which I'm going to pull up over here. The rubric comes up as a, as a pop-up pop uh, web page, and we can see that for spelling, presentation, and language, I have divided it up into six different blocks here. Now, there's a total of one point out of 30 marks for the entire grade just developed to spelling, presentation and language. And in every single stage I have described what uh, what a uh, what the grade looks like. So for a high distinction level you would expect a student to be having flawless presentation, flawless, effortless to read, elegant layout, no errors, looks and uh, feels like a real government publication. 
A pass standard, however, would have some spelling errors detected, uh, would not be terribly difficult to read, and would ha uh, have maybe sometimes awkward writing style, but ultimately would not would not stop you from reading it. A fail grade would be something like SMS speak, uh, missing pages, frustrating to read, any of these sorts of things would indicate the student should be in this block. Now there are a bunch of criteria each here and I have awarded points for each one of these criteria. For example, for referencing there are three points available. For the historical cost aspect of, of my essay there are four points available. Let's have a quick look at how we grade it. So suppose the student has already um, <coughs> finished their assignment and they're going to say, thanks, thanks Philip, please give me a high distinction uh, mark, thanks. Then they will add an attachment with the add attachments. They might be able to browse uh, They'll be able to browse the file. You now see that the document's now attached and they hit submit. Do you wish to submit your assignment? Yes. Okay. Great. Student has now submitted their assignment. So as the teacher, I'm going to teach. I'll go into assessments. You can see this little green thing here to demonstrate there's a new one. Assignment. This is the assignment that I'm trying to, to show. A submitted assignment, which is the demo student. Let's have a quick look at it. And I can now download that uh, file that I have, uh, what the student has submitted before. Um, that was the, by the way, that was the really, really high quality essay that we had a look at and I'll turn it in before. Now, ultimately, this would be very useful to have dual screens so you can have the student's essay open on one and uh, then grade the student otherwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit return graded submission students We're using the following grading form. So I hit the grading form and it appears like this. Now while I'm reading this, I'll be decide, look, this student has used some uh, pretty frustrating spelling. Their elaboration, the elaboration of the question or issue might be up here. Uh, structure sort of made sense. Referencing was pretty bad. Let's give it a pass. Uh, historical cost. They actually did understand historical cost. Mark, mark. Uh, but the recommendations is horrible. All right. So we've now got a point for every single one of these. Every single one of these. Well, not this one. Oops. On there and you would decide where that student fits. Any other comments would be this work was of an okay standard but Philip I know you can do even better. Save. Here we go. So now when the student uh, will save this and we'll return it back to the student for grading uh, with their return marks. Go to the student view. And if the student hops into my grades, uh, the student can have a look at the theory assignment, which they've scored 22 out of 30 marks in total for the entire course. And they can now see exactly where their grades are and what the breakdown was and why with my little comment down the bottom there, which is entered in free text. Now if they even go into assignments, graded, again they can see their graded form, which is this file here again, um, and they can also download uh, anything else which I might uh, submit back to them, which I'll show you, talk about a little bit more in just a moment. So I'll get back to the presentation. Okay. So when you're creating these rubrics, make sure that you create a rubric first uh, and then after that uh, you create an assignment and you attach the grading form first and you cannot, just remind that you cannot actually retrospectively attach a grading form to an assignment. You must actually create the, the grading form first. 
make sure that you inform your students about uh, the rubric when you release the assignment. That way they know what they're up against and they know how they're going to be marked. Grade and feedback in free text as I've just shown you just then. Any further tips I want to follow up on uh, is make sure that your these rubrics are quite good. But just bear in mind, if you're going to make a very good rubric, it can take some time to set up. Basically because you're having to try and <laughs> imagine all the students' mistakes before they've even submitted the assignment. And that can be quite difficult. Once you've also told the students, it also means that you have to... It's a bit difficult to take the rubric, the rubric back, amend it, and then mark the students according to something that you've already given them. So just bear in mind that once it's set, it's difficult to, to basically change it retrospectively. Rubrics can also mean that it's a bit coarse. It's a bit difficult to fine-tune a student. Sometimes i found that a student received uh, a, a 24 mark when really they probably should have received 23 or maybe 24 and a half, but because the rubric is set up already, I can't really change it exactly the way I want it to go. And you, as I said before, you may have to have some sort of imagination so that you know what the student's um, mistakes are going to be before they make them. And that's difficult. Feedback. There are two ways you can feedback. One is using Microsoft Word, the other one is using micro, uh, Adobe Acrobat, which I will actually show you shortly. Uh, with MS Word, it's quite easy. You yeah, just use the track changes function. <laughs> um, because it's a Word document, basically anyone can read it because everyone's got a copy of Microsoft Word. But bear in mind that it can be edited once you've already shown the. Sh uh, once you've already. Um, uh, given it back to the student. So there's no sense of permanency in what you've just delivered. Here's a picture of Microsoft Word and we're looking at the review tab on the top and the functions which I've highlighted here. Here's a little bit of a you know closer view of what we want to actually do. I'm going to quickly show you how to do it here in my sample text. So this is the the essay that the student would have uh, uploaded into um, training VC. And if I want to edit some of this and demonstrate to you why they actually got that, that mark, let's have a look at pick on the referencing. So for example, Smith and Weston, Weston, 1924. I go to review. First thing I do is track changes to make sure that um, if I change anything, the student can see what's my work and what's theirs. And then I'm going to go new comment. And this has got P1, like in comment, fill it while. And I'm going to say, um, the uh, writer's name is actually uh, Wes Wesson and not Western. And this gives me this is exactly my red electronic red pen, and it can show me exactly who I'm talking about and at what point and why. There's also a shortcut key which is Control M, so I'm going to do that. Control, uh, Control M, Control Alt M. Sorry, uh, Kawasaki and Suzuki, 1997. I might say you may also wish to review Toyota and Mitsu, Mitsu, Mitsu in 2000. Again, lots and lots of comments to the students so they can see exactly why they've received that. If I wanted to change anything because it says pros and cons, I might just change that to cons, delete it. And you can see here, I've deleted that. Maybe organization should be bold. So if I change that to else, underline, every time I've changed the formatting, it shows m it shows the student what is their original work and what's my ad additions and changes to it as we move through. Very, very easy to do. There's no difficult aspect about this. I'm sure that most of you will get it straight away. A few shortcut keys that are worth knowing are Control Alt M, which is insert a comment, uh, Control Shift E, which is turn tracking on and off, and also Control Alt Shift C, which will close the review panel if it's open. So feedback in using Adobe Acrobat. Now, bear in mind if you use Adobe Acrobat you will need the full version of Adobe Acrobat. That means that there is some special permission from uh, the Technical Services Department in order to get that installed. It does not come uh, mirrored on every single machine within the Institute. 
using Adobe Acrobat PDF, it, it's much more professional, it's much more official, and most importantly, it's permanent. So the student cannot edit it and change it to make it look like you said something that you did not. Uh, it can be used for anything, not just Word documents. So say for example, if you were using MYOB and the student had printed off a trial balance, uh, you can print that to PDF and then you can alter the PDF and comment that up exactly the same way that you would with a Word document or any other printed material. Conveniently enough, if you're using Turnitin, uh, when you go to Turnitin, you can actually download uh, the things as PDF as well. So I'm going to quickly show, go back to, to Turnitin. Here's Turnitin. Here's the, the essay originally. And if I hit File here, waiting, 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 download, as we can see here. Double click and open it. Right. And here's the file downloaded as a PDF, and it's ready for me to comment up. Using PDF can take some time to learn because it's a little bit different to using Microsoft Word, but once you get it, it's fast, lightning fast, and using stamping, it's great. I'm going to quickly show you how that works. If you learn the keyboard shortcuts, it gets even faster again, and I highly recommend dual screens. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look at some students' uh, work. All right, here is a student that um, I have already given electronic red pen to and you can see that I've just identified every single aspect where either I'm not okay with it or things have changed and um, I've used a whole bunch of commenting back f feedback things here you know, where did you get these numbers from? must reference why is that in bold font formatting I don't agree with that that's great that's not okay and this looks quite difficult and quite impressive however it's very very quick so take for example uh, here's another example as well. It's a dummy student again. It's not a real student. It's work. Pretty disappointed about the standard citation. We know that the student's a very good student. However, they haven't quite actually met the the standard required. Um, so I want to say this reference here is not okay. I'll quickly go. There we go. Ref question mark, uh, but this sentence here, this this sentence makes a lot of sense. So I will go down into my favourite stamps, which seem to be missing at the moment, and I'll be able to add a big stamp here. And go OK, read it through. Uh, OK. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good. Ah, this one here, this sentence, uh, that didn't make so much sense here, or, or it's just flatly incorrect. So I'll be able to find that particular stamp, which will be under sign here. And I'll go, look, that's, that's just not acceptable. That's not correct. And that one too, not okay. Again, it gives you very, very f rich feedback to the student showing exactly what it is that you wanted out of the student, where and why. Very easy to do, very, very quick. So I'll quickly run back as an overview through this presentation again. First off, we have a student, and they upload their work to Turnitin or Blackboard, which will check, uh, Turnitin option will check for plagiarism. Then as a the teacher, we download that information, and we're able to grade using Blackboard marking rubrics. And then using either PDF or Word, we can give some feedback and ultimately upload that back to Blackboard in the same way the student originally uploaded their original assignment, including all of our comments, which they then are able to download and keep forever. That means that I have a record of their feedback, and so do they, and they can see exactly why their mark is what it is. So I want to thank you very much for listening to me for the, uh, the last few minutes or so. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. On Yammer as well, there is, there's uh, some work on Blackboard and, um, and Teaching and Learning Showcase. Uh, you can download some of the handouts that I was uh, able to produce for, for this presentation. And if you're any more confused, ask your tees. They're there to help you. Thank you very much.